Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to configure Dolphin, uh, the GameCube and Wii emulator. Uh, it's become really popular lately, the past two years. And, uh, you know, today I'm using Revision 6515. It is the fastest version of Dolphin available uh, to date. And as you can see right now, I only have a few games, but they all range from the easiest game being Zelda Collector's Edition, all the way to... Monster Hunter Try, which is the hardest game to emulate that I've found so far. Um, so right now I'm going to teach you how to configure it so you can run it on pretty much any system. I'm going to go through my settings and then I'm going to go through what you guys should put it at if you have a lower grade computer. Um, here, so right now I'm just going to open up the uh, DX Diag for my computer. And, uh, oh my god, I can't spell. Alright, so we're going to open this up, and I'm going to show you guys my computer specs. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, right now I'm running an AMD Phenom 2 X4 920 processor. It is a quad-core, and it's supposed to be clocked at uh, 2.8 GHz, but I've overclocked it to 3.1. Uh, it sped up my emulation by about 20%, which I'm very happy about. Um, I'm also running 4 gigs of RAM. And if you can look here, I'm also running an Asus Radeon 50, uh, 6450 uh, HD card. Um, it's about a $60 graphics card. It came out about two years ago. Um, I really haven't had a single problem with it. I can run full screen 1080p games if I really wanted to, but really, what's the point? Um, I have 720p and it's better for recording, anyways. Uh, I don't lag as much when I use fraps. Um, but anyways, here, let's get to the actual game, uh, to the actual configuration. So, <clears throat> basically the only thing you really have to change on this page is first, skip your GameCube BIOS, you really don't need it, and then load up to 60 frames per second instead of auto or off. Uh, the reason I say this is because when you put it at 60 frames, it'll actually make all your games, I don't know why, but it will make your 30 frames per second games run at 30 and your 60 run at 60 instead of having you know a GameCube game which is supposed to run at 60 frames actually run at 30 because the GameCube BIOS says so. Um, it's really weird but I figured out the 60 is the one that works perfect for me. Um, also as you can see here when I'm recording I will do 1280 by 720 in full screen mode. Um, it is I know it's a lower resolution than my actual one which is 1440 by 900 um, but when I'm not recording I'll go up to 1280 by 960 um, but because I'm showing you this video right now I'm just doing true 70, 720p it's um, a lot easier on my CPU and um, you know usually I have it started for my rendering as full screen um, that'll ensure that you know I'll gain a couple of frames per second because I don't have to run any background processes um, but for today, I'm just going to go with turning it off. Install 720p just to show you guys uh, how I'm running everything. You don't really have to worry about any of these, the paths or anything. Um, but the graphics plugin is what you really have to worry about. Uh, I like using Direct3D9 or OpenGL. I personally, for recording, uh, is Direct3D9. Um, always have it at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio um, or a stretch to window. Um, regardless of what it is, I seems to be that you get the best performance with 16 by 9 or auto. The only thing I don't like about auto is that when you look at the screen, you get big blocky black squares right here and right here. And really to be honest, it annoys me. So I keep it at the 16 by 9 keep the widescreen off because you get a lot of graphics errors in a lot of games, especially Twilight Princess. Keep your VSync off unless you have like a 4.2 gigahertz quad core processor or, you know, an i7. Um, for your anisotropic filtering, always keep it at 1. Unless you're not recording, then I'd put it up to probably 4. Um, as for anti-aliasing, keep it off it really just lowers your performance a lot you don't really see a big difference in the actual quality of the game unless you're looking really really close to your screen um, 
but to make better textures, to make things a lot sharper, use the EFB scale to copy. Uh, always turn that on. It'll give you a tiny performance drop if your computer can't handle it already at 30 or 60 frames. Uh, so keep that on if you want to sharpen your textures and load your native mini maps to give you a tiny speed boost. I'm really not sure how that works, but you know it seems to work fine for me. Um, now once again for the EFB, I'd like to use fractional instead of times one. Um, it really doesn't matter to me if I'm not recording. I usually go to times two, and it runs all right. Sometimes I'll get a slowdown, but you can't really complain. So what I'm going to do is keep it at fractional, and uh, do not enable the CPU access. But um, when it comes to copies of your EFB, enable it and put it to texture. Uh, you'll need this for a lot of games such as Twilight Princess, Tales of Symphonia, um, Smash Bros. Melee, and Brawl and especially Mario Kart Double Dash. Um, if not, you're gonna get some really blocky textures and they're really, they're glitchy and black. It's hard to explain. Um, I might show you guys later, probably later after near the end of this video, but um, all right, moving on. The last thing you're gonna wanna do is disable your distance alpha pass. Um, you don't really need this unless you're playing, unless you wanna play in like 1080p high depth kind of thing. Um, what it does is it just, it will scale your uh, distance alpha pass. So what it is, is your close range stuff will show up really clear and then your background will show up blurry. Uh, it's nice in 1080p, but you really don't need it for anything else. Um, I like to keep it turned off, personally. It improves your performance. And I also show my frames per second. Uh, that's just a personal thing. I like to see how fast my game is going, especially if I'm benchmarking. But, um... Yeah, moving on, I'm going to show you guys first Twilight Princess, and I'm using a legitimate controller, GameCube controller. I bought an adapter off of eBay, and if anyone would like the link to it, I'll put it in the description later. Um, this thing's worked perfect for me, like, as you can see, look, loading, press A, loading up the actual game. I am playing at a full 30 frames per second. Sometimes I'll drop to 28 frames, but that's very, very rarely. Um, and like I said, true 720p. Uh, it's rendered to the main window, so I shouldn't have any issues. Um, but here, we'll get outside, because this is where a lot of the lag happens. Um, Alright, we'll run into the forest. Oh man, I apologize for this. I'm really freaking tired. Alright, but as you can see, we still have a full 30 frames per second. Uh, regardless of what I'm doing. No problem. Do some backflips, do my thing. Still 30 frames. Alright, so now I'm going to exit this. And now I'm going to play a harder game. This is one of the hardest games I have to emulate. I'm going to load up Monster Hunter Try, and here I'm going to show you right now, I am playing, playing with a keyboard and mouse. Um, Alright, so, what I'm going to do is load this up, and just take a look at the frames for a second in the top left, uh, top left of my screen for the emulator, you'll see an FPS counter that's blue. Just keep looking at it. Um, this is the hardest game I have to run so far. Uh, it's not really CPU intense, but it's very, it, it relies on the GPU a lot. Um, whereas I have another game, Tales of Symphony, it's another Wii game. It takes a lot of your CPU, so it's harder for me to record it out of full 60 frames. Um, but other than that, I thought I'd show you this one. Working perfectly fine. Alright, all. Yep, see, look at all that. Everything is working perfect. And now, uh, for the final thing, I'm gonna go into a group of monsters. This is usually where your lag takes place. Um, you'll usually drop to about 27 frames, 28 frames, which really, it's still playable, it's just a little bit annoying. 
So, I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna see how it's recording. But like I said, once again, true, 10, uh, true 720p, no issues, and this just goes to show that, you know, you don't need a great gaming computer to be able to play GameCube and Wii like everyone says. Like, this rig cost me about 500, 520 bucks, and it has been amazing for me. A couple of tweaks here and there in the BIOS, and I'm set to go with all my overclocking. Um, but no, there you go, still a full 30 frames per second, and, um, hmm, alright, like I promised, I'm going to show you guys what what happens when you don't use the EFB uh, scaled copies. So what I'm going to do is turn that off, and I'm going to load up Neely, once again with the GameCube controller. All fine. Everything works perfectly fine here. You have no problems. We're gonna go to just a basic melee, and we're gonna load up the Great Bay. This is a fine example of why. See, look at all the connection. It's very blocky and it's very annoying to watch, but it does speed up your emulation. It's really a personal opinion if you can stand it or not. I can't. But, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to rate, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, just leave a comment or PM me. Um, I'll get back to you within 24 hours. Um, if you have any questions, if your computer setup is good enough, if it can run it, um, once again, just send.